Based on the 2005 novel of the same name by American author Harlan Coben, Netflix's thriller drama The Innocent is an edge of your seat with it filled with lots of twists and turns, unreliable narrators, and unrelenting suspense. The story revolves around Matteo Matt Vidal, Mario Casas, and Olivia Costa, Ora Garrido, whose seemingly picture-perfect life together is turned upside down when their respective past comes back to haunt them. Each episode unfolds from a different character's perspective and sheds light on their dark past and involvement in the central mystery of the series. Here is everything you need to know about the show's ending. Spoilers ahead. Matt, a law student, goes out for a drink with his brother Isma, Jordy Cole, on what turns out to be the worst night of his life. At the club, he draws the attention of beautiful Eva, Ariadna Cabral. Her boyfriend, Hugo, Alejandro Albarison, sees them dancing, and a scuffle soon ensues between Hugo and his friends and Isma and his friends. Seeing this, Matt tries to stop the fight, but accidentally ends up killing one of Hugo's friends, Donnie, Yudeld Font, when he shoves him away, and the latter hits the back of his head on his way down. Consumed by immense guilt, Matt can't even look at Donnie's parents, Jamie, Gonzalo de Castro, and Sonia, Anna Wagener. Olivia's past is even more tragic. Known as Candence at the time, she comes from Mexico to Spain looking for relatives and later starts working at a strip bar brothel. After killing her vicious boss Annabel Ledesma, Mickey Esperg, Candence manages to escape the hellhole with the help of Annabel's mistress Emma, Juana Acosta. Afterward, Emma joins a Catholic boarding school as a teacher under the alias Maria Leon, while Candence becomes Olivia and eventually reunites with the unassuming man with kind eyes that she met some years ago. However, Emma's apparent suicide causes a domino effect that puts both Matt and Olivia in mortal danger. Who killed Gallard Owen sees? Jamie, Donnie's father, does both. Since his son's death, he has harbored a deeply seated desire to punish Matt. He believes that the prison sentence Matt has received isn't nearly enough. At one point, he and his wife go to see Matt in prison, and while Sonia finds within herself enough courage to forgive Matt, Jamie continues to hold on to his hatred. He pays a guard at the jail to arrange Matt's murder. This is what causes Romero to attack Matt. You tell her the whole story that you prepared. That her daughter has a serious kidney disease. Years later, Jamie, who is a doctor, sees Matt at his clinic, and his hatred for the younger man gets renewed. When he learns from Olivia's doctor that she is pregnant, he can't help but reflect that his son will not be able to experience moments like this. He starts following both Matt and Olivia and soon realizes that Olivia has her own secrets. Where is she? Getting into trouble, I'm sure. When he sees Gallardo kill Emma Maria, he approaches Gallardo and sees and tells them Olivia Candence's whereabouts. With the desire to comprehensively destroy Matt, Jamie targets his wife. That fateful call she receives is from Gallardo, pretending to be representing Paul as adoptive parents. It's over. Put it down. They tell her that Paula needs a kidney transplant and asks her for all her life savings for making the connection between her and Paula's adoptive parents. The video sent to Matt implying that Olivia is having an affair is also one of Jamie's plans. But then, Gallardo and C's start to get greedy, and Matt finds C's hotel room with Zoe's help. Realizing the opportunity that he now has by sheer luck, Jamie collects Matt's fingerprints from the latter's car. Chief Alite, I want to question you. After killing Gallardo and C's, he leaves Matt's prints on the gun, implicating him in the murders. He also pays Roberto to speak to the media and claim that he knows that Matt killed Romero. This helps Jamie create a public perception about Matt that entails that he is capable of everything he is being accused of. Jamie nearly succeeds in getting the revenge he wants, but Matt is ultimately saved by Sonia's willingness to forgive him. Why does Kimmy want revenge against Olivia? From the moment Candence joins Annabelle's club, Kimmy becomes a mother figure to her. Kimmy notices the similarities between the girl and herself when she was younger and helps her cope with the incessant rape and torture by being there for her. They and Emma plan their escape together. Run, 
you a way out of here. You knew your weaknesses. But on the day they are supposed to put their plan to effect, Emma and Candance discover that Annabelle has killed another girl, suspecting that she has stolen the videotape 27 from his collection. However, Emma, Candance, and Kimmy are the ones who stole the tape. After Candance kills Annabelle to protect Emma, the latter comes up with a new plan. They make it seem that the dead girl is Candance and that Emma has run away with Annabelle. They then dump Annabelle's body in the ocean. And her first time in hell hurts you as much as your own. After they disappear, Kimmy faces the wrath of Annabelle's secret and influential clients, including the school agent Teo Aguilar, Jose Coronado, who cuts off one of Kimmy's fingers while trying to extract information from her about the tapes. When Kimmy learns that Candance is still alive, she feels an immense sense of betrayal and wants her to suffer the same way that she has suffered. After Paula comes looking for her biological mother, Kimmy reaches out to Gallardo, from whom she eventually finds out that Candance is still alive. She then sends him and sees to the Catholic boarding school as Paula's adoption happened from there years ago. They find Emma there and kill her and are subsequently contacted by Jamie. On the other hand, Kimmy lures in Olivia by messaging her as Paula's parent. But you were. And it was thanks to the forgiveness of a woman whose soul you shattered. Olivia seems to be suffering from survivor's guilt and repeatedly asks for forgiveness from the older woman. Unbeknownst to her, Kimmy has already decided on how to punish her. She sedates Olivia by mixing something in her drink and takes her to the very place where Annabel entertained his secret clientele. When Aguilar delivers Matt in exchange for the tapes, she ensures that Matt will get to watch as three men gang rip his wife. Fortunately, Lorena arrives and rescues them. But even after all this, Olivia's sense of guilt is so profound that she takes a bullet meant for Kimmy. This finally makes Kimmy repentant for her actions, and she gives Olivia the necessary information on Paula. Change what happened. I can't. I can just try. I know, try to learn a what is in the tape 27? Although Annabel evidently ran a successful club, his real income was from blackmailing his secret clients for whom he arranged underage girls. All these people were affluent members of society and maintained apparent anonymity by wearing masks. But the asshole probably talked too much. You know he never revealed your name, but you suspected he told Emma about the tape. It wasn't intentional. No one except Annabel knew their real identities. One among them was especially brutal. He even killed one of the other dancers at the club. Kimmy, Emma, and Candance figured out that Annabel tried to blackmail this client and was actually terrified of him. Annabel didn't mark the videos he made of the clients with their names. Instead, he used numbers. And this client was number 27. As Olivia learns, the person in tape 27 is actually Aguilar, who the SKU has incidentally sent to retrieve the tapes. The agency has concluded that, if the tapes were to get out, they would destabilize the country. Aguilar claims that he is no longer the monster he used to be, but he continues to murder and torture in search of the tapes and blames others for his actions. When Lorena corners him and takes away the tapes, he kills himself, not wanting to be there when his wife and daughter learn about his atrocities. Lorena hands the tapes over to the higher authorities. She knows that there will be much turmoil in the administration because of them, and the only way she can gain immunity is by solving the case. Even after finding Matt's fingerprints on the gun that was used to kill Gallardo and Seize, she continues to believe him and convinces her supervisor to wait when Matt holds Jamie at gunpoint. Danny. Danny. Look at me. Is Matt completely innocent? No, Matt is not completely innocent. None of the main characters are. They are all trying to put their dark past behind them. Matt accidentally kills Donnie and pays society for it. However, he doesn't share the true circumstances of Romero's death with anyone else, including Olivia. As it is revealed in the closing scenes, he initially lets Romero go during their confrontation. But when Romero attacks him again, Matt drops him several feet below, killing him. He decides to keep this hidden as he begins a new life with Olivia, their new baby, and Paula.